What's going on, guys? Welcome back. This is a brand new year, well, almost. Uh, if you guys are listening to this tonight before the New Year's Eve ends, it means that uh, you should be able to catch me on Twitch sometime around 9 or 10 o'clock. I'll leave the details below. I'm going to be Twitch streaming on my Xbox. I don't know if I'm doing Titanfall 2 yet or Gears of War 4. It'll be one of the two. Uh, usually when people make a whole list about the top games of uh, 2016, 2015, there's a lot more games than what I'm going to say. But uh, being my budget the way it is, I was only able to get a few games this year. And these are games that I would consider... Buying again at $60, full price, uh, even though that sums come down in price, you know, uh, and I'll get into that. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you guys are having a good holiday. Well, let's get in the list. So this game, the first game on the list is a game that was mired with two broken betas. I personally was in the betas. I personally didn't have a problem with them, but a lot of people did. So the reviews and stuff like that were starting to swirl that this was going to be a game that was going to be a disappointment. It's not going to live up to the hype. And that first game was Doom. This came out in May, like a week before my birthday. It was great timing. Like I said, I was involved in two betas. And I knew this game was going to be something special because from what I could tell from the single player trailers, from what I could tell about what I was reading, what I was seeing from the guys on Twitch, you know, this was a throwback game. Games that I grew up with. This, this feels very old school. It feels very nostalgic. And that might turn some people off. And I understand that. You know, we've grown up in a generation where COD has basically <clears throat> been the king until this year of first-person shooters. And everybody's grown up with that. Like COD, Halo, things like that. But if you're old school or you like fast-paced arena shooters, I would really give this a try. You know, the single-player campaign is... There's not a lot of story there. But the gameplay by itself makes up completely for that the snap map feature where you can make your own scenarios your own campaigns your own multiplayer maps your the possibilities are almost endless in snap map it is above and beyond what halo forge does the only thing about that game that i could say is a negative is the multiplayer con the component it's very mediocre it's made by the same it was made Initially by the same guys who made Halo 5's uh, multiplayer experience. But uh, Creative Assembly, I think it's the name of them. Uh, but ID Software took over some time later on. But I think it was just too late to save the multiplayer part of the game. It has loadouts. It lacks the, the pickup and weapon swaps of a normal arena shooter. Games on PC like Toxic and Unreal Tournament do it so much better. It's still the closest thing to an arena shooter you're going to get on a console, but in terms of PC, there's not a lot of people playing it anymore. The next game on my list is an Xbox exclusive title. And that's Gears of War 4. Uh, and you know, I was kind of torn about this game before it came out. I, I, I wasn't really going to get it, but then I got it and it's like, I'm pleasantly surprised that I'm pleasantly surprised they didn't screw it up. You know, Gears of War Judgment was a big misstep in the series. Uh, Epic Games sold it to Microsoft and they created the Coalition, which had a lot of the guys from the older Gears, Gears 1, 2, and 3 working on this game. 
So they basically did an episode seven of sorts. You know, they they told kind of the same story, but with different characters. Uh, JD Phoenix is a good prota- uh, protagonist. Uh, when you see the original cast, like uh, Dom and Baird and Marcus, you feel an emotional connection because of old games. You know, if you play the Gears of War games. I really highly recommend this. The only negative I can say is the microtransactions are horrible. Uh, It costs way too much to get a pack. It costs um, way too much time to try to get a pack. Uh, Horde mode is a little bit more generous with packs, but still, yeah, it's still kind of got that balancing issue where uh, most of the things are cosmetic. There are some things in the Horde pack that will help you with your Horde mode gameplay. But most of the things are cosmetics. 90% of the things are cosmetic. Uh, it's still pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, let, we'll have a video about microtransactions someday. But this is not that video. This is just games that I would recommend for you to get. These are games that I would gladly pay $60 again to buy. That's what I consider to be Game of the Year materials. When you don't feel bad about paying the full price for a game... That's when you know that it's Game of the Year material. These are not in any particular order either. So, the next game on my list come out way before Gears, and that's Overwatch. This game, I wasn't initially going to buy it. It seemed really cartoony to me, but it's got something special. It's got, it's like an entry-level first-person shooter. Like, this is something that, you know, my kids could play. Um, it's very well-paced, well-balanced. They're constantly tweaking the characters. Uh, it's something that I'll play still on occasion. Uh, it didn't grab my attention as much as I thought it would. I even made a video series at one point about it. Uh, <clears throat> but it's still worth, worth the $60, and it's something that I could see still being around for a long time. Especially since they're trying to make an eSport out of it. So if you guys are into multiplayer shooters, and if you guys are into uh, first-person shooters, and you don't want something, you don't want to be, you don't want something that's going to overbear you in terms of gameplay elements, Overwatch is a really great game. Really highly recommend it. So the last game on my list is a game that I've been hyping on Twitter and Facebook, anywhere I could, I could do that, anywhere I could promote it, because it got a really bad uh, release date. It was between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty, and that's Titanfall 2. What the hell are you waiting for? Uh, nice to see you, big guy. Welcome back. Good to be back. There is not enough good things I can say about Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2 and Doom are the two games of the four that will always remain in my Xbox library. Uh, I only have a 500 gigabyte version. I really need to get a terabyte hard drive, but still yet. It will always remain in my hard drive for me to play. Uh, And it really fell in between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty, which is a real shame because it it kind of got covered by those games. Uh, with the holidays, it's gained a little bit more steam, but not a whole lot. Um, and what it does right is that this time around, they have a single-player campaign. And I know you shouldn't be praising the game for having a single-player campaign, but it does. It has a single-player campaign. It has a multiplayer uh, gameplay. Uh, everything's very f- uh, fast and fluid. Um and the biggest the biggest reason the biggest selling point of this game is no season pass you know it's doesn't require you to buy a season pass to get a new map to get uh new weapons new titans all that's free it's included in the cost it's very good value you know there are microtransactions now but they're 
very cheap microtransactions. I think I went on there. You could buy a pack for your Titan. And it's like five nose arts and one skin for like a two dollars. And it's it's really cheap stuff. So if you guys haven't picked up Titanfall two, go pick it up. It's the best Call of Duty game you're gonna get this year. Uh, and yeah, guys, you know this is a short little video. I didn't want to make something too long, uh, too drawn out about what I think is the, the best games of the year. Now these games I was able to get and I was able to afford. There was a couple that I did get that were really bad. But for the majority of the year, I was able to veer myself away from really bad games. That's why there's, got, there's not going to be a bad games list. Uh, the only game that I got, and I got it for free, uh, was No Man's Sky. And it was horrible. But, you know, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. I uh, hope you guys have a, a wonderful New Year's. If you guys are listening to this after New Year's, I hope you guys are safe and uh, everything went well for you. You know, your parties and all that. Me, myself, I'll be Twitch streaming tonight on uh, Xbox One. Probably Titanfall 2, Gears of War, like I said. I don't really know yet. Uh, it'll be it's around 9, 10 o'clock. You know, I'm going to get drunk, get a, little, get a little tipsy. You know, we'll, we'll have a little few laughs and stuff like that on Twitch. So, you know, hang out and join me. And uh, this is Jesse James King from 81 Studios signing off.